David Carpentier, today's guest, is the co-founder and CEO of Assurely, a venture-backed insurance company that provides DNO insurance to crowdfunding issuers, benefiting both investors and entrepreneurs in the bargain. He'll share insights about his work and his superpower. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. Welcome to the Superpowers for Good show, where we empower you. David, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation. It's just a thrill to be able to talk to you about some of the things you're doing because you are really disrupting uh, insurance for small businesses in America. I'm I'm excited. This, oh, is, I, I this is a big I deal. Um, yeah. yeah, I think if we do it right. It should be a big deal. Um, you know, it's interesting. We we not to not to be uh, disagreeing from the beginning, but so we actually have a, a we aren't allowed internally to use the word disrupt. <laughs> it's, it's more we we try to focus on the evolution, and, and you know, I think you're going to hear a little bit about the why behind that. But yeah, yeah for, as it relates to small businesses, we're really excited with the work we're doing, and more importantly, the stuff we're working on that's going to be available in the next couple of years. Yeah, well, you know, for the record here, uh, I'm using uh, a Surely's Tiger Mark product on my crowdfunding. Well, for my business, the the Super Crowd Inc which is conducting a crowdfunding campaign to raise money under regulation crowdfunding. And it's that product, I think you call it Tiger Mark, Mm -hmm. that really is disruptive because until you created Tiger Mark, there really was no way to get proper insurance for the risks associated with undertaking a, a crowdfunding campaign. So tell us about how it works and what it is and all that. Give us kind of the, the basics here to start. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, of the why behind it, right? Mm-hmm. So when we looked at investment crowdfunding, we saw a massive uh, industry that was at its inception, right? And so we take $1.7 trillion of of uh, private securities in the United States that is starting to migrate towards digitization, leveraging technology and the internet to accomplish all of the operations, all the value propositions, all the stuff of why private private securities exist. Um, we said, okay, cool, this is this is new, this is interesting, and when new and interesting uh, industries and, and markets evolve, um, all the relevant service providers need to adjust to that insurance not uh doesn't get a pass on that and so it, tiger mark was simply an adjustment of the relevant insurance and protections needed to help enable a industry to grow flourish and be safer for all, all the various participants so that was the why behind it um the tangible pieces there's a couple there's a couple things that the traditional or the incumbent or existing insurance policies just didn't support. Um, a simple one was when you are raising capital as an issuer or as an issuer, as a, as a company raising capital and leveraging fraud funding or some derivative of capital raising through technology or the internet. There's certain things like uh, inviting and uh, inviting um, what the SEC calls uh, uh, unaccredited investors, right? Or um, using the internet, uh, what the SEC calls general solicitation, which is just mass marketing. To the insurance world, the folks said, hey, that looks like an IPO to me. I'm out. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Um, Because IPO risk is very expensive, very difficult, yada, yada. Um, Or if you're not out, it's going to be priced like an IPO. If you're raising a couple hundred thousand dollars or a couple million dollars, uh, the cost of IPO insurance is cost prohibitive. So yeah. therein lies, we needed to do something different. And so that was kind of the what, the why. Uh, so it's comprehensive directors and officers insurance with a couple key insuring clauses, particularly uh, it is the only directors and officers insurance policy that, that I'm aware of that protects companies from investor claims. Um, that's one, but then there's all kinds of other bells and whistles, marketing benefit for the investors, um, the intermediaries that support. There's some there's some coverage and and protection there. So 
Mm-hmm. Pretty complex product, uh, but the short answer, it is an adjustment to a traditional directors and officers product that also has a key benefit for investors um, that want to participate and invest in, the, in these companies. Let's, let's drill down on that just a little bit. Uh, if you're looking at two identical crowdfunding offerings, you know, mm-hmm. you're on WeFunder and you're trying to pick between A and B doesn't happen very often this way. But if you're looking yeah. at two almost identical offerings, uh, one has insurance, one doesn't. Tell us about what that difference means to an investor. What what are the circumstances? Because there are still a lot of things. I mean, the, the business can still fail and you don't get your money. This doesn't 100%. guarantee you get your money. But what, what does it cover for yeah, investors? Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, um, the, the symbol of Tiger Mark, when you see it on an offering page, um, is not investment advice and should not be treated as such. There is my compliance. Uh, and so um, we proactively had conversations with uh, with FINRA about that. Um, so there is our disclaimer, big red flashing red lights. Um. <sighs> Again, it's not for a long-winded answer, but when you look at these major industries, e, you know, shopping when when eBay evolved um, in the early two thousands, the sharing economy with Airbnb and Uber, what happens is when a symbol of trust and some protection that or some some guarantee, for lack of a better word, comes into play into these new online transactions, that's what really unlocks widespread adoption. Right. There's going to be first. There's going to be first movers, early adopters that are like uh, risk. Don't matter to me. I think this is cool. I'm in. And then there's you know the general public that say, okay, cool. I I, I need some. I need some 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 safety, some comfort, some confidence. So what you're going to see from a traditional insurance policy, um, directors and officers, uh, is that you are not going to say, investor one seven. Four raises their hand, and say, "I'm having a bad hair day." And with great hair like yours, I assume this is not what what yours is going to be. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it can be. I just want my money back. We're actually seeing this a lot in um, with a certain subset of, of users. But I just want my money back, whether it's relevant or not, whether it's an insurance claim or not. They they, they deserve it or not. But that happens, right? There's the ability for the insurance policy to. to to satisfy that quote unquote refund, um, which is unique to anybody else. So I can be an investor, I can say, I'm suing you for my money, right? Tiger Mark is the only insurance policy that supports that. Or I can say, I'm not suing you, but I just want my money back and I'm gonna be a squeaky wheel and I'm gonna create a lot of commotion for you, Mr. and Mrs. Company. Um, and Tiger Mark has what's called the investor benefit that the insurance policy has the opportunity to return the principal investment to the investor, um, as part of the, uh, insurance, one of the, is, is a part of one of the insurance clauses within policy. So hopefully that wasn't too complicated. There's two things if you're lining up. One, it protects the company from lawsuits from the investors or just complaints. And then from an investor perspective, it should give them the confidence to say, hey, I'm not worried about them running away from my money. I'm not, I'm not uh, worried about them saying they're going to build XYZ company and they end up, I don't know, building a smoothie shop that I have zero interest in, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's basically stealing or theft, um, material misrepresentation, which is lying, saying I'm going to do one thing, but I'm doing the other. And the other one, uh, there's there's a string clause um, without swearing is is basically saying if they do something dumb, the the company that's one thing they made a mistake. If they do something very 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 dumb, there has to, there's an opportunity to to get your investment back in the form yeah. of an insurance claim. And there's all kinds of legal language around that. Yeah, but so, this is really so important. Be- just to close on that, so it basically gives the investor say, hey, don't worry about them lying, seeing cheating. You're investing with somebody online that you might not know. They might be a stranger. Get confident that those things are controlled for. 
get excited about the business. Is that a business you want to support? Is that a business that, that is going to reach your goal as an investor? The rest of it can be neutralized. And that was really the intention around the two-sided marketplace and why we built TigerMark to support all these different stakeholders. Yeah, it, it, it really is critically important because so often in this arena, right, when we're talking about crowdfunding offerings, people raising $100,000, half a million dollars, uh, it's often early money. Yep. Uh, the, the, the people are unknown. Uh, they don't have a track record. And that that the presence of a little bit of insurance mm-hmm. that backstop against the things that are the hardest to test for, right? The lying, cheating, and stealing. Um, that's really, I think, a big deal and should mm-hmm. give investors a lot of comfort. And um, issuers <clears throat> are usually represented by attorneys. And attorneys have raised an interesting question in, in my discussions. And they, they've kind of said, well, the presence of the insurance may invite mm-hmm. investor claims that wouldn't otherwise happen. Um, how do you respond to, to that question? Because I thought that was an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, I would probably not want to disclose all the kind of inner workings of the policy, but what we're really trying to prevent is that one squeaky wheel investor that has $2,500 in and for relevant reasons or irrelevant reasons, again, the bad hair day, or, Hey, I think they're, I think they lied. Right. Satisfying that person versus allowing that snowball to create um, Mm -hmm. a class action lawsuit uh, is really, really valuable and saves a lot of time, money, and and, and candidly a heartache, um, which is kind of what the insurance is there to support. Um, So I recognize it. I think it is a valid um, question to ask. I also believe that is uh, it's it, it's anchored in the way the world used to be, right? And so I don't disagree with that comment. Um, it's also been thought of and accounted for. Yeah. So as you're thinking about this, as the as the uh, policy writer as the company who's on the hook for this risk, you're okay with issuers talking about their coverage, even though some might reasonably argue that that could invite a claim. You're saying it's we man, we have a strategy for managing this risk. We accept that risk and we're happy to have our covered issuers tell the world they have coverage. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. And you think about what what we're trying to really get accomplished here, right? And if you go back to, uh, listen, I'm not going to talk about, you know, London and and why insurance was created, right? But when you're here to enable an industry to grow, to go take risks, to go do something new, right? And so ultimately that symbol creates that that level of comfort in a new online transaction or presumably has the opportunity to, to contribute to that right it has the ability to neutralize certain risks that an investor might be concerned about it certainly has the opportunity in in with with full confidence um provides protection against the company who's concerned about these new risks of hey I'm bringing on a thousand five thousand people I don't know Right, which I think is if you're at a big law firm um, that has been used to doing IPOs, um, you're going to want to steer your customer away from this type, these types of things, be, in, unless there's insurance. We unlock that. We let these companies access um, the ability to bring the crowd in and all the value propositions. Whether you are you know, a large company that's trying to be, you know, a unicorn. Or if you're the local brewery, right, that wants to have a community-based um, support, uh, we neutralize those risks. Um, 
on both sides of, of, of the transaction. Yeah. Now, David, you've had some remarkable successes in the past, uh, including a little professional hockey. But uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how Assurely fits into your life story. Yeah, I. Uh, it's not. It is a natural one, but um, it's a little. So basically, when, when you're a quote unquote jock, and you're no longer good enough to be a quote unquote jock, um, there. <laughs> What do you end up doing? You find a prepackaged financial product to go sell, right? And that's kind of what happened. Um, I grew up in small town Midwest. Uh, I didn't have a pedigree to get into one of the big banks. Um, and so I found myself into an exciting environment in the insurance industry, which generally is a fascinating industry. The worst part about being in insurance is telling people you're in insurance. <laughs> Once you get through that stigma... Um, and candidly, it's one of the things that we're trying to to uh, to to adjust and solve for. But once you get through that, it is a wonderfully dynamic industry with with brilliant people. Um, some of the challenges are the business model, value proposition, expectations. Um, there is certainly is the opportunity to run to the middle in insurance and survive. Um, a lot of these things just kind of contribute to the fact that. There's less than 35% of all small businesses, um, a McKinsey poll that came out recently, are happy with their insurance coverage or their insurance provider. That's terrible. I mean, insurance, uh, under we're in the business of, of ultimately selling trust, right? And the research points that the insurance industry and people actually aren't trusted. It's a fundamental business model debt and problem. Right. And so I think it, it it takes some special people to kind of take a take a step back and say, hey, what are we actually trying to do here? Right. Um, and I think with that lens, um, you know, we've had some success, not just me personally in a past life, but I think uh the Shirley team has had some success professionally. And it's really given us the opportunity um to look at it and say, hey, we don't need our vanity check mark on LinkedIn. Right, we kind of already have that. We we don't need people to tell us we're we're good at what we do or we know what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And that's really allowed us to to not build something just for the sake of having a good business, but building something that's actually needed in the industry that then translates into financial success for the stakeholders and and the uh, the shareholders. Um, and so I think growing up in a in in the environment of uh, sports where you're like you do the work you do the practice you prepare you practice good habits upstream it produces downstream results uh applying those basic concepts um from a uh uh i don't kind of strict background but very like a, you know you get, be a good person when you when you shake somebody's hand you look them in the eye yes please no thank you these I don't call them basic, but these kind of common decencies and these these habits and these best practices as being a relevant human being, not a relevant, but just being a, a, a what's considered is a good human being, translates in spades um, when you when you start applying them to the business environment and, and in our case, insurance. Um, and so I think it's been more of the habit creation that sports created for me. Um, combining that with a wonderful like I come from a fantastic, I, I, I recognize I, I have a luxury. I, I come, you know, I was born in the United States. Um, I come from the middle class. Um, I'm a male, I'm white. Uh, shit's supposed to work out for me. If it <laughs> yeah. doesn't, it's on, it's on me. Right. I recognize yeah. that privilege. Right. Yeah. And I don't take it for granted. Um, and so taking those, those, those lessons, um, my ability to be well-educated, um, all that stuff. And translating that in, into just something that actually makes sense, um, and in having the 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 I don't know the confidence in other folks that hey I think you're going on the right path and it makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, David, you know the, the success you've had is is impressive, and and your innovation with the Shortly and Tiger Mark is really exciting. Uh, 
what do you see as your superpower? Ooh. Uh, well, and I don't know if I was necessarily successful in this in this conversation, but I think, um, particularly with insurance, I think just because this is uh, what I'm spending the majority of my time on right now, is I think it's, there's there's a part of what I do is is taking complex ideas, taking complex things, and simplifying them and making them digestible. Uh, I don't know how well I did particularly in as it relates to Tiger Mark. Um, and it's a continuing thing I'd, I'd like to, uh, I, I focus or I, I work towards and continue to practice. But I think, you know, creating or taking complex ideas, complex concepts, um, and communicating them effectively in a simple, digestible way. Uh, I'm happy with, I'm happy with my success there. Yeah. Well, I, I think that is uh, an incredibly important superpower that all of us would like to be able to emulate you know for crying out loud the, the world is complex and being able to understand it requires that we take some of those complex ideas and uh, simplify them uh, you mm -hmm. know i think of you know i'm a big climate change nerd and uh, i'm not an expert in any legitimate sense but but I, I, I'm well enough aware of the, you know, the issues, right? That the uh, to understand we talk about greenhouse gases and a lot of the stuff that we talk about it are are really metaphors that allow us to simplify understanding the physics behind a warming planet, right? This idea of a greenhouse trapping sunlight inside. Mm. That's that's a simplification, right? And so uh, being able to you know, having been an early scientist, right, and figuring out how to start using that kind of a metaphor around climate change, for instance, would be a big deal. And you're doing some of the same things in insurance. Can you think of a uh, a particular success you've had in your career where you did exactly that? You took a complex idea, made it simple, and that was a key in, in accomplishing a successful thing that you're proud of? Um, I think it's, it's, yeah, uh, I think Tiger Mark is a representation of that. Um, there, the interesting part about Tiger Mark is it's complex to people who it doesn't necessarily apply to, right? So if it's something that isn't relevant to their day to day or isn't relevant to something that, that they have any knowledge about, or, or isn't something that, uh, even is applicable to them, it's complex, right? I think for the people that uh, have gone through it before, it is, it's actually kind of wild. Uh, Devin, early on, we built the product so that there was no application, no forms to fill out. Um, and uh, in the beginning, people, people were like, what's the catch? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like, how, how is this possible? Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we added a little bit of friction into the workflow. We started asking a couple of questions, right? We already had the information, right? We added a couple of questions. And what it did is, is that people, uh, it, it, was, it, it, it wasn't as much of a change from their existing experience. It's kind of like, think of it as an analogy, uh, like the easy pass, right? So if the, if the insurance experience, um, which still exists for the majority of small businesses, is you're on the Jersey Turnpike or, or whatever state you're in, and there was the person at the toll booth. You walked up, you, get, or you got the ticket, you went to the, where you came off uh, the highway, you gave your $6.40, and you had to have change in, in, in one of the cup holders. To the evolution, the various steps along the way of you had to, okay, cool, now then there was a light and the, and the arm went up, to you had the, the pass on your windshield, to today, I, I live in Austin, um, you're going up 183, and they're snapping pictures of your license plate and sending you a bill. And so I think what was interesting to us around is we could build for the easy pass that exists today. 
but the consumer experience had to walk through the evolution in the mic uh, um uh a couple different a couple different stops along the way before they got yeah. comfort and it was it was wild so if you want to talk about what insurance consumers really really want um a lot of the insurance industry was building for this just zero friction um and it's actually the third sometimes even the fourth priority for an end user right and i and i can break this up into consumers people who buy you know travel insurance or or homeowners or, or auto coverage into small businesses Right, two very very specific uh, uh, folks. Um, the biggest thing is it was a gating emotion. The biggest thing they wanted to get accomplished is they wanted to feel like they weren't making a mistake. Until you got them comfortable with that, they were not making a mistake by doing something. You weren't going to be able to engage with them. And part of that is trust. Part of that is is um, reputation. Part of it is a lot of other things. Um, but what, what we we're not expecting is adding a couple um, additional steps of friction was going to help people trust you. It was like kind of counterintuitive, but the data is the data, right? Yeah. Um, it also allowed us to kind of get engaged with them, talk them through it, uh, a lot of other stuff. So uh, proud to say we're back to probably what half of the folks are just using it with the click of a button um, and another half are, are still going through the process. That's Great. Uh, it's an interesting uh, evidence of your superpower. <clears throat> as we as we think about your your superpower, uh, I wonder. You know, as a CEO, you've got plenty of people who look up to you for advice and counsel, and I, I can't imagine you've never had the opportunity to to coach people a little bit on how to develop this ability, uh, maybe in specific cases uh -huh. rather than general. But but think now with us, what would be some tips to begin learning to do this better? Help us think through yeah. how we can all take complexity and distill it down into simpler ideas. Oh, I wish the team was here for this, right? They don't, they don't. <laughs> we'll let them listen. We'll let yeah, them listen. Uh, so there's a couple of things, and so I'm I'm borderline obnoxious about this. Um, there's a couple there's a couple of things. First and foremost, you, and excuse I, I know I swore earlier and trying not to. You just you got to give a crap. That's first and foremost. Yeah. Like just care. That's one. Yeah. Two. There's something a little more tangible is the personas. The the if you can increase the intimacy with the the counterparty, the person you're you're communicating with or you're building a product for, right? Um, when you humanize them, when you have empathy for them, whether, right, versus just like they are a recipient of a product. Uh, your ability to communicate with them, your ability to adjust product and workflow and experience in the whole nine yards, uh, your ability to put yourself in their shoes, you can now describe the thing as it relates to them. Um, insurance is, is wild. It's, we're not the stars. We're supposed to be in the shadows. We're here to support and, and enable you, Devin, to go build a, a business and, and, and have a, a platform that, that adds a ton of value. We're, there, we're just, we're making sure that you're safe doing that. Right. Um, and so our level of intimacy with you, with the other companies raising capital, with the concerns and the needs of the investors, Right. Uh, that is really a contributing factor. So really diving in deep and really, really intimately understanding who they are, what they need, why, the why yeah. behind them, et cetera. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, great, great advice, David. Now, uh, before we wrap up, I wonder if you would just take a minute and tell people how they can learn more about a Shirley and Tiger mm -hmm. Mark. Uh, in fact, it's so easy to sign up. Maybe you tell people, just take 30 seconds to tell people how to sign up. Uh, and then uh, be sure to add how people can connect with you personally, because people yeah. will want to connect with you and maybe your team uh, for those that, that are uh, interested in things your team can help with. Got it. Uh, the first place to go access Tiger Mark is through your relevant crowdfunding uh, portal platform attorney. Um, you're going to get a significantly better price 
by uh, one of our approved partners. Um, so ask your part at the people that you are working with. Um, the the price is literally going to be twenty five to fifty percent cheaper. That's not that's not like we invented the question mark. That is those are real numbers. Um, if you access it through one of our approved partners, uh, the second is you can ping our website directly um, and engage with our team. It's, it's www.assurely.com. Um, and you can find the Tiger Mark uh, uh, landing page in there. I believe it's tigermark.assurely.com. But, uh, and I should know that, but the team's going to kill me. <laughs> um, and then me, uh, I'm active on LinkedIn. I'm relatively active on LinkedIn. Um, uh, so if what, what I don't respond to are folks that just say, I want to connect. Um, so if, if there's, Hey, I, I want to connect because I saw you on, uh, Devin's podcast or because I have this agenda item with you, uh, but I'm active on LinkedIn almost on a daily basis. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, David, we really are grateful for you taking the time to do this. We're excited about what you're doing. And I, I recognize that this is a critical piece in really exploding uh, impact crowdfunding, you know, where I focus my time and attention is on what I call impact crowdfunding. And, and we, we need to remove all of the friction we possibly can. And you are removing some friction. So I'm excited about what you're mm -hmm. doing. I want to see you succeed because I think it's essential for this movement of impact crowdfunding to succeed. I, I, so I we, appreciate We want to see you succeed. I appreciate that. And, and we won't succeed unless the industry does. So, you know, for our, our job really here is to adjust to the needs of what you, what you want, what you need, what your, what your counterparts. Um, so feedback, feedback, feedback. Um, we're nimble. Um, we're thoughtful about what we're doing. And so if, if there is a need and, and it is a relevant need, we can adjust for it. Fantastic. All righty. Well, David, let's do some good. Thank you for tuning in to the Superpowers for Good show. Twice each week, we host changemakers who share their impact, insights, and superpowers. Don't miss another episode. Subscribe today at superpowersforgood.com. That's superpowers, number four, good.com. Be super empowered. Get your copy of the book, Superpowers for Good as an ebook, audiobook, paperback, or hardcover edition via your favorite online retailer. Interested in having me speak to your company, organization, or association? Visit devonthorpe.com. Then let's talk. Now keep using your superpowers for good. Together we can reverse climate change, improve global health, and eradicate poverty.